EC201 lecture 22. So yesterday we saw the common gate amplifier which is nothing but a incremental current control current source where GM tending to infinity will imply that the input impedance goes to zero the output impedance is infinity and the current gain that is I out by I in equals 1 and we also saw how we can compute swings uh, you know so that you prevent the transistor from getting out of saturation one thing to note is that so all this only holds when the transistor is operating as a incremental voltage control current source itself ok which means that the uh, transistor must be uh, must operate in saturation hmm? so the moment the transistor goes out of saturation all these things will go haywire and whatever you put this in uh, that circuit the output sine wave will, uh, will start to clip we have seen the voltage controlled VCVS have you seen this this is the common drain amplifier the voltage controlled current source we have also seen current controlled current source is the common gate amplifier what did we call the VCCS we called it the trans admittance or the trans conductance amplifier so the last man standing is the current controlled voltage source so by this uh, if you call this the trans admittance amplifier what would you call this quite straightforward this is what is called the trans impedance amplifier and again rather than put on the circuit and say this is a trans impedance amplifier let it make sense to basically try and figure it out from scratch so it builds intuition this is the fourth time I am doing this so now you should be able to tell me what I should do we, what all do we have with us we have with us a mass transistor which is a voltage controlled current source ok and this gives us a chance to compare two voltages and push in a current which in principle can be infinitely large ok if GM is large so given this background information how would I synthesize current control voltage source in other words I need the incremental output voltage to be equal to some R times I n any suggestions that what I can do again let us go back and think you are in a lab I gave you a current I n and asked you to produce a voltage V out which is related to the input current by the relation V out is R times I n so what would you do we have done this before already in the context of in the context of op amps there uh, things were a bit more straightforward because we had a variable voltage source to begin with and we could vary the voltage of the uh, variable source by comparing that output voltage divided by R with the input current now we only have with us the MOS transistor which is not a variable voltage controlled voltage source but is a voltage controlled current source so is all lost or is there no reason to despair you have some node you want to push its potential up you can either connect it to a voltage source and increase the voltage source or is there any other way of pushing the potential of a node up ok so there are there is, we don't have to worry about it because if we had a current source we can use it to push the potential of a node up so if you want to push the potential of a node up what will you do you push current into a node its potential will go up you pull current out of a node its potential will go down so there is no big deal about not having a voltage source 
So if you had a variable current source, you have the provision of making the potential of the node of a given node go up or down. So let's say this was V out and we want to make this V out equal to R times I n. So any suggestions on what I can do? Uh, one suggestion that your friend there is making is uh, you convert this V out into a current which is equal to V out by R. This is what we did when we, when we had the op amp. You convert the, the output voltage into a current by passing it to a resistor. Compare that current with I n and then look at the potential of that node and then go and tweak a V out in such a way so as to make that potential equal to zero. We could continue on that line and that will uh, that's perfectly fine. But since I've already done that, I'll show you how we can approach the same thing in another way and end up still with the circuit which looks very similar. Another argument is to note that if V out is exactly equal to R times I in, then V out minus R times I in must be equal to zero. So one way of finding out if V out is the voltage you want is to determine this quantity V out minus R times I. Does it make sense? If V out minus R times I n is greater than zero, what does it mean? Means what? V out is is too high or too large. What must I do? I must reduce V out. On the other hand, on the other hand, if V out minus R times I in is less than zero, what does it mean? V out is too small, so I must increase V out. In other words, I must compare V out minus I in times R with with ground, okay, and tweak V out in the proper direction. Does it make sense? Okay, so now we are in business. So let's say this is V out. I need to compute V out minus I in R. So any suggestions on what you will do, which law you will use to subtract two voltages? What law did you use to uh, to subtract or compare two currents? KCL. So what law will you use to compare two voltages? KVL. Currents must be connected in shunt to add them. Voltages must be connected in series. So if this is V out, how will I subtract I in times R? A simple way of doing this is the following. If this is I in and this is R, then this potential is it's V out minus I in R. So I should compare this potential with with ground and and what should I do? Let me call this Vx. So if Vx is greater than 0, I must must decrease V out so, if Vx is greater than 0, it means V out is too high, I must go and decrease V out. How will I decrease V out? So if I had a variable current source, how will I go and decrease V out? I need to pull current out of V out. If I yank current out of a node, its potential will decrease. So, in other words, if I had a variable current source, if I connect this up like this, this variable current source must be dependent on it must be dependent on Vx. So, this I must be proportional to Vx. Correct? Should be proportional to uh, plus Vx or minus Vx? Plus Vx. Why? If Vx is greater than 0, I must bring V out down, which means I must suck current out of that node. Okay? So, if 
I is proportional to V H. It must be of the form some G M times V X. And as usual, what is the argument? This whole comparison process must be super sensitive. Okay, if, if it is sloppy, then obviously V out minus I in times R will not be equal to zero. The G M must tend to this fellow here must tend to infinity. The stuff inside the green oval, what does it represent? If I redraw the stuff inside the green oval in a more civilized way, this is Vx, this is Gm times Vx. This is the incremental equivalent circuit of the MOS transistor. Okay, so I replace the what was there in the oval before is now so which is the gate which is the source which is the drain Vx is the gate very good okay so which is the source ground the source is grounded Vx is the gate what happens to the drain we out of the drain so this then represents the incremental equivalent circuit of current controlled voltage source. If Gm tends to infinity, Vx, Vx tends to 0, which means that, what is Vx? V out equals I n times now, if I had a current source like this, what is the incremental output voltage? I just change the direction of the current. So, output voltage, incremental output voltage will also say, change sign. It will be minus I n times R. Alright. And what about the incremental voltage at this node? And what can you say? Can you make any comment about the, the potential at this node? It is still zero. Okay? Does it make sense? Fine. We have made a voltage, con I mean current control voltage source. So, the next job is to do what? Find the incremental input and output impedances. So, what do you think? Uh, let's assume first the, uh, the first case GM trending to infinity. What is the input impedance? Okay, if, uh, if you don't know, what will you do? You will draw the, okay, what will you do to, you are in a lab, I gave you two terminals and told me to find, I told you to find the input, the impedance looking and what will you do? Pass, uh, push in a current measure the voltage or push in a voltage measure the current. Here it seems, here it is such a trivial thing, either way it is the same thing, okay. So, if I push in a current, what is the potential at this node? Whatever value of current I push in, that node potential remains zero if Gm tends to infinity. Correct? So, what is the input impedance? You have two terminals, I push in how much ever current you want, the potential between the two terminals remains equal to zero. So, what is the impedance between those two terminals? Zero. Okay. Alright. So, the next thing is to obviously figure out what the output impedance is. What is the output? How would I figure this out? Please note that GM tends to infinity. Zero. Why? So, for the output impedance computation, you need to find the Thevenin impedance between, between these two nodes. And what is that? Is it easier to apply voltage measure current or apply push in current measure voltage? When things appear in shunt, it's always easier to apply a voltage and measure the current. So, if I apply an incremental voltage across these two terminals, what will be the current drawn? This is delta V. I applied a delta V there. What will this potential be? Why? No current flows to the gate. So, this is delta V. If this is delta V, what happens to this current? Gm delta V 
Okay, but GM tends to infinity. So, if I apply a small, even a small delta V across these two terminals, an infinite current is drawn from uh, the top terminal to the bottom terminal. So, equivalently it is a, if I had two terminals coming out and even if I put one milli, um, milli volt between them, if I see infinite current flowing, what does it mean? It's a short circuit. So, the incremental impedance is zero. So, output impedance is also zero. It comes out of analysis like this, but can somebody give me intuition on why it makes sense that the output impedance is zero? What do you understand when I, when you say the output impedance of this voltage source is zero? What do you understand by that statement? The voltage remains the same even if I loaded on that voltage source with any arbitrary load. So, if we took this output and put some load here for that matter, let's say I add on some RL here okay, and GM tends to infinity. So, what do you think happens? The output voltage before I add the load RL was minus I in times R. Now, if I added a load RL, what do you think happens? If I suddenly add RL there, what would immediately happen to the potential at this node? If I took there is some node, I suddenly added a resistance between that node and ground. What will be the tendency of the potential of that node? The potential of that node will tend to go down. Okay? The moment this potential goes down, what happens to this potential? Please note that this potential is nothing but this potential minus, I mean, plus I in times R. So, the moment this potential goes down, this potential will also go down. And then this MOS transistor is got infinite GM. So, the moment it sees that the gate has gone below ground, what will it do? It will inject a massive current into this node in this direction because Vx is gone negative, thereby pushing the node potential back up. This is nothing but negative feedback in action. Okay? Alright. And we see that the if GM tends to infinity, the Z in is zero, the Z out is zero, the trans impedance is, is the ratio of the output voltage to the input current and that is minus R. And you see again for the nth time that if the GM tends to infinity, this behaves like an ideal control source where all the parameters Z in, Z out as well as the trans impedance are all, how do they depend on the device itself? Z in, Z out and R and the trans impedance are all independent of the device parameters itself, okay, which in this case is simply the GM, as long as the GM is sufficiently large. Okay, so now the obvious question is, what large, I mean, how large is large? Then basically what we need to do is to compute all these parameters when GM is, is not infinity but finite. What is Z in? Okay, you don't know, so you will figure it out. How will you figure it out? You draw the incremental equivalent circuit of the transistor which is GM Vx, this is R and I am pushing the current in here. So what is Vx? Okay, what am I interested in finding? If I want to find the input impedance looking in here, what do I need to do? What do I need to find? I need to find Vx by In. Okay, so which means I need to find Vx. What is Vx? Why is it In by Gm? This resistor R is in series with, it's in series with the current source. So, in other words, and anything in series with the current source can be removed. It's equivalent to having this. So, what is Vx now? So, what is this equivalent to? 
दिस इज इक्वल एंड टू अ रेसिस्टर ऑफ वैल्यू वन ओवर जी एम सो वी एक्स बिकम्स इक्वल टू आई एन बाय जी एम विच मीन्स दैट द इनपुट इंपीडेंस इज वन ओवर जी एम डज मेक सेंस and clearly as gm tends to infinity z in tends to zero what is the next thing to find it is z out okay so how will i find z out i apply an incremental voltage i deenergize the input source which is i in apply a delta v so what happens what is the current drawn from this uh, delta v simply nothing but gm delta v because the voltage at the gate incremental voltage at the gate is simply also the same as delta v because there is no current flowing through r if i apply a delta v the current flow the, the incremental potential at this node is zero uh, i mean is uh, is delta v because the drop across the resistor is zero Hmm? which means that the incremental current flowing out of the delta v source is simply that flowing through the transistor and what is the incremental current flowing through the transistor this is delta v so this must be gm delta v so what is the output impedance it's 1 over gm and clearly as gm tends to infinity the output impedance must tend to zero the next thing is to find the trans impedance if i had to find the trans impedance i i am left with no other option but to actually draw the circuit this is vx this is in this is gm vx this is r this is v out okay what will i do to uh, how will i find v out okay so v out is nothing but vx minus i in times r that simply it was voltage law v out is nothing but vx minus the drop across the resistor the drop across the resistor is i in times r since the current to the resistor is i in and i n must be equal to i n time must be equal to gm times vx that makes sense okay which means what v out becomes equal to i n by gm minus i n times r which means what v out is uh, is nothing but 1 by gm minus r times i n which can be written as is equal to minus r times 1 minus 1 over gm r you understand and we see clearly that as gmr tends to infinity v out by i in tends to minus r which is what we expected in the first place so what is and we know that in practice you cannot get gm to be infinity you can only make it sufficiently large and what is sufficiently large in this context so large gm means gm much much greater than 1 by r that makes sense so the next job is to bias up the transistor so we need an incremental circuit which looks like this and so any suggestions on what i can do i need now obviously i need to bias the transistor up so that it is op operating in saturation and 
after biasing the when i find the incremental equivalent it must look like this guy here on the left you can stabilize the bias point in one way and then for the incremental signals you can make the circuit look completely different uh, which uh, bias technique do you think say, uh, would be the most simple thing to use to get uh, this kind of incremental picture uh, please note that the incremental circuit here the source is grounded so it seems as if the easiest thing to do would be to find the bias technique where the source is grounded too isn't it otherwise i mean otherwise you if the source is not grounded in the in the bias technique then you would have to put an infinite capacitor between the source and ground in the incremental circuit here you see that the source is grounded so the easiest thing to do seems to be to pick up one of those bias techniques where the source was grounded to begin with okay so and what is that measure current in the drain and change the potential of the gate by keeping the source grounded so this is one example of how one may do it this is i ref this is r okay what is the incremental picture of this chap what happens to the current source open circuit okay so incrementally the guy on the right looks like the fellow on the left is that clear does make sense okay now what do we do we need to are we done or we need something else to do we need to do something else we need to add on the source and the load so which is what we would have in practice so we presumably have some kind of rl here and some kind of current source like this the current source for example could be added on right away and if you do not want any quiescent current to flow through the load you have rl okay and this is the infinite capacitor if i now had a variant like this for example if i told you that gm times r was much much larger than 1 and had this this was an infinite capacitor this was rs this was vs what do you think uh, is the incremental output voltage assume gm is infinity see please note that if gm tends to infinity this not the incremental not potential must be zero okay if this not the incremental not potential is zero the current flowing here would be vs by rs that current cannot flow into the gate it has to only flow in through r the incremental drop across r in this direction would be vs by rs times r and which means what happens to uh, which would which is the incremental voltage here and because this is a this is a short circuit this must all the incremental voltage here must also be the same so the incremental v out by vs must be equal to minus r by rs what is the quiescent current to the transistor i ref okay so what is the incremental current to the transistor assume gm is infinity what is the incremental current v out is basically minus vs r by rs okay so what is the incremental current flowing through the transistor think carefully the total current the incremental current here must be the sum of the incremental currents the the sum of the incremental current in this direction in this direction and this direction must be equal to zero correct okay the incremental current flowing through irf has to be zero because irf becomes an open circuit for incremental signals so what is the incremental current flowing through the transistor it must be incremental current in the transistor come on people is v out by rl which is minus vs into r by rs divided by rl 
That's the current through R, right? Eh? What else? What is the current through R? It is Vs by Rs. Is the, I mean, is the sign correct? Minus Vs by Rs. Provided that I have chosen the directions of the currents in the way here. It's minus Vs by Rs. So the incremental current in the transistor must be the negative of these. As long if I, if these directions are correct. Okay. So the incremental current in the transistor is simply equal to Vs times R by Rs or Vs by Rs times R by Rl plus 1. Now you can see this intuitively also. Vs times R by Rs times 1 over Rl plus 1 over R which is Vs R by Rs divided by Rl parallel R. Okay. So what is Vs times R by Rs? It's the voltage here. Okay. It's minus the voltage there. Okay. So, if this voltage is swinging up and down, what is the current flowing through Rl? It's basically the total current flowing out of this node Okay, in these in these two branches is V out by RL flows here and what flows through this branch? V out by R. Why? Because the incremental potential at this node is, is zero. Okay? So the current flowing through this node uh, through this branch is V out by R, the current flowing through this branch is V out by RL. So the total current so as far as the transistor is concerned, it looks like this is ground and this is ground. Okay? So the equivalent resistor as seen by the transistor is nothing but R parallel RL. So the total current flowing out in those two branches is V out divided by R parallel RL. That has to be supplied by the transistor, which is why it makes sense that the output current is V out divided by RL parallel R. The negative sign is gotten rid of because we have chosen the signs that way, the, the directions of the current that way. So we have now found everything. I mean, we know the gains. I mean, you can do repeat the same exercise for finite GM. But we have found the incremental input impedance, the incremental output impedance, the incremental gain, which means that we are now in a position to find the swing limits. Okay, it's pretty straightforward. I will do that next class.